Many will be familiar with the work of one H.P. Lovecraft, a peculiar man to say the least, with an even more peculiar imagination. Whilst you might say he was severely underappreciated in his own time, we now look back on Lovecraft and his vivid mythology and are often mesmerised, baffled, or just sometimes straight up weirded out. Lovecraft's stories were always full of bizarre creatures, nefarious beings, and a whole load of dark and twisted magic. But known universally within his works is a rather obscure and yet terribly fascinating book, one which Lovecraft details as the Necronomicon, a tome that has since been thought to be loaded with deadly secrets, ancient rituals, and unearthly power. Whilst Lovecraft never really shines much light on the specific contents of the Necronomicon, there is an understanding that only illness, despair, and even death await the unlucky soul who dares to read its pages. Despite being a creation of Lovecraft, there are those who believe that the book itself actually did exist, and that Lovecraft had merely translated it and published it as his own, and worked it into his own stories. Through this, what was otherwise considered as a mere plot device in an eccentric man's writing would also become something that some believe exists in our very own world. But why would this be the case? It's no secret that Lovecraft encouraged other authors to contribute to his works in an effort to build, arguably, one of the first major shared universes within literature. The Necronomicon, therefore, was in essence shared between authors, each writer using the book as a plot device to further spin new tales and establish new characters and ideas. As Lovecraft's universe expanded, so did the mentions and popularity of the Necronomicon, in fact, there are many uses in today's mediums where the Necronomicon is used, despite having no actual relation to Lovecraft or his world. With this in mind, it isn't hard to see why some began to believe that the Necronomicon could have been an actual book that existed, or that there had to have been some shred of truth to it. The origins of the Necronomicon are perhaps even stranger than the contents of the book itself. Lovecraft tells us that a man named Abdul al Hazred, or the Mad Arab as Lovecraft describes him, wrote about the extraterrestrial creatures that existed within the cosmos, and that they were called the Old Ones. By this, you might say that originally the Necronomicon was a fictional history about the world in which we live, and that aeons ago, these creatures held dominion over reality. Lovecraft would also go on to elaborate, declaring that the name Necronomicon meant the Book of the Laws of the Dead, or the Book of Dead Names. Over the years, other authors would give their own interpretations of what the word Necronomicon actually meant, as well as the meaning behind the book itself. What was once a book that contained the names of the dead, as well as the laws surrounding them, would later develop a reputation for containing spells, rituals, and more specifically, the summoning of the dead, or necromancy. Given a similarity of the words, it is not hard to see how this link was made by other authors, though this does not appear to have been Lovecraft's original intent. Nonetheless, the content in the Necronomicon, according to Lovecraft, revealed details in regards to the universe in its infancy, as well as the monsters that once thrived there, and that these were so incredibly terrifying that those who were to actually read the Necronomicon would be driven insane. In fact, many of Lovecraft's stories see his characters suffering that very same fate the moment they get their hands on the Necronomicon, and that the things inside that very book were so beyond human understanding that the mind would simply break. According to Lovecraft, the original author of the Necronomicon, Abdul al Hazred, was a poet born in Yemen and lived in Damascus during the 8th century. Al Hasred was a frequent traveller and found himself exploring most of the Middle East and various regions of Europe. He was a very intelligent man and one who showed aptitude at translating languages. How Al Hasred came onto the knowledge within the Necronomicon was through meditation and the inhalation of various fumes. Once intoxicated, the thoughts that he experienced took a dark turn and he soon became conscious of these tremendous extraterrestrial beings within the universe. It wouldn't be until years after Lovecraft's death that a piece that he had written entitled The History of the Necronomicon was released in 1938, whereby some more critical details about Al-Hazred were revealed. 
Firstly, the book was originally coined in Arabic as Al Asif, and is thought to have been a reference to the noise that insects or demons make during the night. In addition to his enhanced meditations, Al Hazred was said to have discovered the lost city of Babylon, where more knowledge was gained that would lead him to completing the Al Asif. After his mysterious disappearance in the year 738, his writings were circulated amongst scholars for the next 200 years, where in the year 950, they were translated from Arabic to Greek by the fictional philosopher Theodorus Philotas, where its name would become the Necronomicon. The translated text was said to have been hugely controversial, particularly because it would influence those who read it into committing horrendous acts. Due to the nature of the book, and the supposedly unspeakable things that it made people do, the book was burned in the year 1050 by the Patriarch of Constantinople. Another idea is that those who read the book became consumed with the knowledge of these extraterrestrial beings, and sought to harness their power through the instructions in the book. Lovecraft's writings tell us that after this, the book became something that was spoken of only in hushed tones. Those who still sought after the dangerous knowledge contained within the book, did so in the utmost secrecy. Lovecraft tells us that the book was eventually translated 200 years later, from Greek into Latin, by the Danish scholar Olas Romius. Whilst this scholar did indeed exist, the dates that Lovecraft gives do not coincide with the dates that Romeus would have been alive. In any case, both the Greek and Latin translations would be banned by Pope Gregory IX, although Latin editions were apparently published in the 15th and 17th centuries in Germany and Spain respectively, as well as a publication in Italy sometime during the 16th century. An Elizabethan occultist by the name John Dee, who lived during the 16th century, claimed to have translated the Necronomicon into English, but Lovecraft detailed that this version was never actually published, and that it only contained fragments of the original meaning, as written in Al Asif. Al Asif itself had long since disappeared, though Lovecraft noted a secret copy did indeed emerge in San Francisco before it was lost to a fire. Meanwhile, the last Greek copy was thought by Lovecraft to have survived up until the end of the 17th century, where it was burned during the Salem Witch Trials. There are other translations as determined by other authors in the extended universe of Lovecraft, including one translation in Hebrew, but this is usually a point for contention, especially considering that Lovecraft detailed that there were now only five true copies of the Necronomicon, two of which are in Latin and three in Spanish. The first is at the Bibliothèque Nationale in Paris, whilst the second is in the British Museum, where it is hidden from the public. The third, fourth and fifth copies are in Spanish, where one resides in the Miskatonic University in Arkham, which is a fictional location within Lovecraft's world, the University of Buenos Aires in Argentina, and the Widener Library at Harvard University. Of course, Abdul al Hazred, this elusive mad Arab, who first brought out as if, or the Necronomicon, into the light of the world, was merely a fictional character that Lovecraft created, after being inspired by Andrew Lang's Arabian Nights. In fact, Al Hazred was an entity which Lovecraft would see himself as, when exploring Lang's world as a child. Lovecraft would eventually wish to write the Necronomicon himself, to further build the validity of his world, and give some substance to the seemingly devious writings. He believed that it would be a great way to flesh out the ancient world, and give more credence to his mythology, but he never got round to it. Whilst this may seem like a shame, the fact that no actual text was produced by Lovecraft only gave room for other authors to create their own Necronomicons, and also ensured the mystery and intrigue around the book, given that no one would ever be able to determine the absolute truth of it. Still, the fact that no official Necronomicon was released by Lovecraft himself it did not stop others from trying. A quick search on Amazon or in a bookstore and you are bound to find a Necronomicon, some of which claim to be the actual real deal. Of course, all of these are fakes, or at the very best, authors given their own spin of what they think the Necronomicon would have sounded like. For every wholesome author who sought to produce a Necronomicon to enhance Lovecraft's work and further his vision, there were probably around seven douchebag publishers keen to push out their own poorly produced Necronomicons 
in order to make a fast buck. This would of course reinforce the idea that there was a real Necronomicon, or that all these hoax ones were indicative that a real one did reside somewhere. One of the most well-known hoax books is one known as the Simon Necronomicon. An author who went only by the name Simon produced the book in the 1970s, and appears to combine the Lovecraftian mythology with that of Sumerian mythology. The result is this mystic spellbook, which claims to give the owner the ability to summon various creatures, amongst other things. Despite its now blatant phoniness, the book has never been out of print, and as of 2006, had sold over 800,000 copies. Given the publisher's marketing methods included some sensational claims about the book's magical power, and that it's the most dangerous black book known to the western world, it comes as no surprise that it's had the success that it did. To make matters worse, three additional volumes have since been published. Despite Lovecraft openly insisting that the Necronomicon is purely fictional, it's amazing how the belief in the contrary became so widespread. Belief in the Necronomicon was so potent that many of his fans at the time would write to him to inquire if there was any truth to it. Pranksters were known for listing the Necronomicon for sale in bookstores, newspapers, or for creating fake entries for the book in library card catalogues, where they would check the book out under the name A. Al Hazred, the fictional author of course. Before long, conspiracy theories about the Necronomicon began to point the finger at the Vatican of being in possession of a secret copy. Given how successful the Simon Necronomicon did, it only made sense that a book to debunk the magic book would soon be on the way. The Necronomicon files were published in 1998, and would attempt to detail evidence against the Necronomicon's existence, and to prove that this whole thing existed only in the mind of Lovecraft, much as the author had professed. One thing that Lovecraft didn't speak much of in regards to the Necronomicon, however, is what the book actually looked like. Despite frequently referencing it in his stories, and despite characters actually getting their hands on it from time to time, he was quite sparing of its physical details. We understand that it is commonly portrayed as bound in leather, and having metal clasps. But in some stories, the book itself is often disguised, hiding in plain sight, and sometimes under a completely different name. In some stories, characters end up reading the Necronomicon without actually realising it, and this leads them to suffering from the insanity that Lovecraft warned of, as they cannot comprehend the information they have gained. Of course, as you might have guessed, there don't appear to be any real life occurrences of people reading books and suddenly going insane, and if there are, it's probably not Lovecraft who's responsible. It's probably E.L. James. The takeaway is that the Necronomicon is pretty much just a plot device used to generate a sense of legitimacy to Lovecraft's otherwise unbelievable ideas. Whilst this was most likely Lovecraft's idea, it seems not even he anticipated how much influence the Necronomicon would go on to have. As always guys, if you've enjoyed today's video then don't forget to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to keep notified. Until next time.